Hey crafty friends, it's Amanda with Pear Blossom Press. Today I've got something a little different for you. Instead of making one card from start to finish, I'm going to show you how I made the backgrounds for six different cards. All of them use aqua pigments. These are liquid watercolors from Brutus Monroe. This is the first time I've played with liquid watercolors, and I have to tell you it's a lot of fun. Um, I grabbed four different colors, orange, coral, I've got a magenta and a fuchsia. And because I had never used them before, I decided to swatch them first. And so you see me adding a little bit to my palette. And then I'm also dropping um, the pure color onto a piece of watercolor paper so that I'll know what the color looks like undiluted. Um, I'm grabbing a pipette and adding a little bit of water. And off camera, I do have a bucket of water that I'm cleaning my pipette with each time. Um, so I'm going to add a little bit of water and then I'll... Um, dilute it a little more each time, just so I have a swatch here. And I could not tell from the bottles, but the magenta is a little bit more purple than the fuchsia is. You see between the coral and the fuchsia, um, the magenta looks a little more pink. So when I go ahead and use these on my card backgrounds, I'll switch up the order in which I use them so that I can get a nice gradation of color from orange to coral to fuchsia and then magenta and then back. Um, and you saw me mix the colors too. I've got orange and coral, coral and fuchsia, magenta and fuchsia in between. And so with my swatch dry, I know what I'm dealing with. And I grab the polka stencil from Brutus Monroe and I'm using it onto some dry watercolor paper. And I had diluted all of those uh, colors down in my palette, so I wanted to just add a bit more pigment to them, get them bold and bright again. And you see me number my palette in the order in which I want to use them. There are seven colors now, because I mixed the steps in between. Um, so in order to keep it straight in my head, I wanted to just number them. I'm also numbering my stencil Around the edge of each stencil, it's hard to see from here, but um, the edge has uncut circles where I've written my numbers, and those help you line the stencil back up again, too. So it's, it's actually a really neat stencil. Um, now I'm just taking drops of the colors. The corresponding numbers go in the corresponding row. And I'm not sure if you noticed, but I went 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So I go up and then backwards down so that I don't have orange right next to magenta. Um, you get a nice gradation of color. And this time around, because it's the first time, I hadn't really played with them yet, and I've never actually dropped color through a stencil before with a pipette before, so I wanted to play with it. And I'm kind of using it almost like a paintbrush. I'm, I'm trying to fill the whole area of the circle with the pipette instead of just letting the color do its own thing. And you'll see that it, it travels underneath a lot more, spreads out. Which I like the way it turned out, but it wasn't exactly what I was trying to do in the first place. Um, but I just went with it for this one because I was playing and I like it. <laughs> also, I have a trick to bring this whole thing together so that It'll still look a little messy, but it'll look like organized chaos. So watch. I take some of the darker colors with a little paintbrush, and I just splatter it on. That fly specking really helps. It, it pulls it all together. So for my second background, I'm doing the same thing, but this time around, instead of letting my pipette go all the way to the edge of each section of that stencil, I'm trying to be pretty careful and just use the stencil as a guide for where to drop it. And it keeps, primarily it keeps those drops in place. There was a little bit of spreading, but not near as much. And as a result, the color dried bolder. And I fly spec this one too, because I like the way it looks. For my next background, this is actually a technique I picked up from Mama Elephant. You drop watercolor onto watercolor paper. By the way, did I say I'm using watercolor paper for everything? I am. 
Um, and then you just blow it around with a drinking straw. And this was dry paper. It'll move more if your paper's wet, but I wanted dry. And I'm trying to get crazy lines here, which it's gonna be a hot mess. Also your desk will too, but it cleans up pretty easy. Um, and it's a lot of fun. You just blow it around till it looks good. And then key here is to fly speck it at the end with some of that dark color. That'll pull all of everything together and make it look like it's kind of supposed to look like that. So those are my first three. For the next background, I wanted to paint the background. And I am no artist, but I can draw lines. <laughs> They're not the straightest lines, but I can still draw lines. Um, so I just wanted to do a sunset here. And I've got a, a die that's like a mountain die. And I'll put that in the forefront, but behind it I want a, a background that looks like sunset with all these bright colors. So I went ahead and painted those on and I realized I needed to bring that color down a little bit more. And I'll just touch up all the other colors here a little bit. And then I'll dry it again. And after it's dry, I'm gonna flick on some more clean water and lift up some of that color. Just adds a little more texture to my skyline. I thought I would add a little bit of interest there. My next background is also a painted background, but this time the idea was to um, emboss a white sentiment onto the color. So I wanna add a couple layers and all of the interest here is gonna be with the texture that I create from the, the watercolor here. So I'm drying it in between. I want it to be kind of choppy feeling, lots of, lots of texture in this one. Um, so after I get a couple layers, I'll flick on some clean water and lift that up. And then now I'm going to take some more of the pure color and splatter that on there too. And this was fast and easy. And it really has a, a bold, bold drop of color there. Came out pretty neat. For my last background, I'm going to use some lightweight texture paste. And I'm mixing it with more of the um, the pure colors. And this time around, I'm, I'm only going to mix the four colors straight out of the bottle. I'm not going to mix them together. Because when I spread them over the stencil, the colors will start to mix as I lay one on top of the next. And this liquid watercolor, there's, there's no... Um, it's a smooth watercolor. There's no bits of um, undissolved color in there at all, you're going to get nice pure color all the way through. So you don't have to worry about weird colors popping up that you weren't expecting. And this lightweight texture paste, it's, it's really neat. When it dries, it is very lightweight. It doesn't weigh any more than, than the paper weighed to begin with, practically. And it's got a lot of fun texture. You notice that I'm drying between um, applications just so that I don't smear any of it on accident. And also, I'm not sure if you can tell, but the numbers on the stencil, there are little circles that are partially cut out of that stencil, and it helps you line it up when you move the stencil around. Works great. I like these stencils a lot. So after I get this one dry, I decided I wanted to give this a little something extra too. Um, I've got some glimmer mist here. It gives my background a nice pearlescent finish. I was going for like sort of an effervescent bubbly effect here. <laughs> it actually looks really neat in person. I'm not sure if you can see the, the shimmer on camera. So let me just show you the ones that I made real quick. The two with the dropper. And I've got the drinking straw blown background. The two backgrounds that I painted. And then the texture paste. And you can see the texture paste versus the dropper. The colors are... If I hadn't sprayed it with the shimmer mist, those colors would be very close to, to the same because it's so highly pigmented. 
And I'm not going to make you watch me put six cards together, so I'll just briefly go through what I did with them. I grabbed a bunch of die cuts from my stash. Most of my sentiments are from the Rock On set from Brutus Monroe. On this particular one, I embossed it in gold. It was kind of hard to read, so I stamped it again on the inside. It says cheers, and then I added a, another little sentiment under it. That's the white embossing. I actually did it for both of these cards. I like the way it turned out there. And I've got my little rock on. That's actually on a layer of vellum, which is die cut and then offset with another star. And follow your dreams is also on a, a layer of vellum. So I've got close-ups here. You can see what I've done in detail. What do you think of my backgrounds? If you haven't tried liquid watercolors yet, I'm going to urge you to grab some of these aqua pigments. They're a lot of fun to play with. In fact, they're so much fun, I made a whole other set of cards, which I'll show you soon. Um, you can find more pictures for the cards I made today and links for all the products I used on my blog. You can also find me on the Brutus Monroe blog. I'm guest designing. Yay! I've got links to both of those down below. If you enjoyed today's video, please give me a thumbs up and click subscribe. Thanks for watching!